Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comment video. We have some information concerning AMD's Radeon Fury X. There's a hell of a lot of rumors concerning this card, isn't there? It might even be be beating out Maxwell at this point for the rumor mill. But anyway, um, there's some good news. There has been some leaks concerning the OpenCL performance, as well as confirmation on the number of shaders. Now, it's not official confirmation on the number of shaders, but it's pretty damn accurate. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So, before we proceed, it's very important to know that the benchmarks are a little old. They actually date back to May of 2015, that was this year, of course. Um, and so, there possibly will be a difference, in fact, there likely will be a difference between what the GPU is scoring in the final retail, you know, version that you and I are going to be running out to the stores to buy, or not depending, versus, well, what's being shown here. Because obviously drivers will probably be, be more mature, the, the silicon might be higher clock speeds, what have you. But before we get into the performance side of things, this is also an article if you want to check out more information, it's linked in the video description. But let's talk about the compute units, the 64 compute units with, which have been shown. Now this is very, very, very important because it pretty much confirms what we've been guessing for some time now that the GPU would con contain 4096 shaders. Now we could do this with basic mathematics. Yes, that is an actual technical computer term, mathematics. Anyway, if you take 64 by 64, you come up with the 4096 shaders. Now the reason you do this is because each of AMD's um, compute units it just this is just how the uh, GCN architecture, the graphics core next architecture works. Each one has a 64 shader uh, shaders in each compute unit. So you just basically do the maths on that. This would also mean if we're following uh, following along the logical train of uh, joy. I have no idea what the hell's going on in my brain today. It's it's a friend after you come back from work, isn't it? Anyway. Um, the GPU should provide about 8.5 to 9 teflops of computing performance, assuming that we're going to be looking at the GPU clocked around the 1 gigahertz mark. Uh, once again, to figure all of this out, you've got to remember that the GCN architecture uh, handles two instructions per clock. We've discussed how to um, calculate the GPU performance several times over, so I won't go into it for the trillionth time. Now, Another point, remember compute results won't necessarily mirror what the actual GPU can achieve in gaming applications. This is quite important because let's just, just for the sake of argument say that you know we're playing the latest Tomb Raider. It's not the same thing as actually handling compute tasks. And also once again to reiterate these are different driver iterations and so on and so forth. But even so... It's looking quite interesting. I won't read out all of them because, well, it would be extremely boring. And obviously, it will also depend on the test you're going for. But in one test, the Ocean Simulator, uh, simulation, I'm sorry, the AMD Radeon graphics processor scores 3102.864, 3,104 frames. The 864 is extremely important. Well, maybe not that important, but still. If one compares this to the Titan X, which is scoring about 2500, um, 2, or let's say the 280X, which is scoring 2300, you could start seeing the, the GPU is actually pretty damn impressive, um, and indeed should have all of the earmarks of performance that we are expecting the GPU to have, at least in theory. In another test, we're looking at the AMD Radeon graphics processor, once again, most likely the Fury X, having a smaller, but still a lead over the Titan X. It scores 39.296 mpixels versus 37.223 mpixels. Now, obviously, this is not always the case. The GPU does occasionally lose out, um, but I would like to obviously re-point out that this is still really early stuff and we don't know what the clock speeds are and obviously we don't know pretty much any of the main details at this point 
all we can do is just assume the the performance will improve because obviously driver revisions they do improve over time as one would expect i'm feeling kind of good about this um and here's the thing for gamers it's kind of a bit of a weird situation because i'm really hoping that the fury x is fast and i'll tell you why because if you're a 4k gamer <clears throat> at this point You've only got a couple of options. You can go SLI or Crossfire or something else. In other words, 4K gaming, you've not really got that many GPUs you can choose from that are really that high end. And I've said before and I'll say it again, Maxwell, it was a nice improvement over Kepler. I'm not saying it was a bad GPU, but it's not leagues above it. It's not. Um, it's an improvement, particularly in power. Like for mobile, it's incredible. The, like mobile laptops and or m laptops are kind of mobile that's a bit redundant but for laptops and so on definitely a major improvement in architecture for desktop pcs there's definitely a performance improvement without a question the 980 tie is faster than say the 780 tie and the you know titan b is faster than titan a and all of that stuff but it's not leagues above so really what i'm hoping is that amd's gpus are a little faster than nvidia's so at the very least this year we've got faster gpus available for gamers particularly who don't really mind or you know they just want the best regardless of cost um obviously you've got the gtx 970 which is really good for the price um you've got the 290x which is also really good for the price as well considering amd were very aggressive in pricing who knows maybe those gpus are going to dry up however once AMD start doing, uh, start releasing the 300 series, who knows? Maybe that could be a thing. But I think, at least my personal opinions, I would like AMD to release a killer GPU that's considerably faster, maybe 10, 15, 20 percent, whatever, over the Titan X or at least the GTX 980 Ti, so that gamers can say, hey, you know, we've got a really good, powerful card for this year, and then both can duke it out next year and let's face it next year is gonna be exciting i i honestly am i'm i'm really happy for next year because um there's just there's just so much cool stuff coming out uh direct x12 obviously it's late this year it's coming out in terms of the games i know windows 10 is going to be out earlier but i'm really looking at it from the game's point of view there's going to be a couple earlier but most of the games and especially when developers really can utilize it it's going to be kind of latish this year to early next year and then you've got nvidia's next generation gpus and you've got amd's next generation gpus and more importantly they're going to be using hbm2 which is going to be astounding and some people are saying hey that means everything's going to be 4k well yeah i guess it's theoretically possible but what are we going to be looking at for those next generation games I mean, I've said before, and I'll say it again, like, when I, back in the day, I upgraded, uh, this is completely off topic, but I upgraded back whenever it was to a 9800 Pro, and then I upgraded once again, and I remember when I started to play games like Doom 3, and I started to play games like uh, Crisis, I suppose, or even the original Far Cry, I suppose, if you want to go back that far, and these are just a few examples of where graphics engines just pummeled the gpus that were capable of uh, running at high resolutions i mean i remember looking when all the tech set websites a lot of them have closed down now but there were tech websites that were doing like all this benching of like doom 3 back in the day and you know these were everyone back then was kind of used to running quake 2 or what have you or you know quake 3 at ludicrous resolutions like 1600 by 1200 which was ludicrous back in the day remember and you know at, at nice high frame rates and then suddenly games like far cry came out or crisis came out or what have you came out and suddenly you think to yourself hmm uh maybe it's not supplyable on 15 frames a second at 1600 by 1200 let's just dial this down a little bit so uh, that's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm not saying that it will happen, but I definitely think that once DirectX 12 comes out, I think maybe not so much with ports, but PC-specifically optimized games, 
it's going to be very impressive. And I think the GPUs are going to kind of continue. So I don't think that suddenly, you know, th th there are some talks that, oh, I might not need to SLI or Crossfire or what have you. And, you know, a single GPU will be able to run at 4K with the next generation. Well, maybe for the older games, but I got the feeling that we're going to be in for it. And there's still a hell of a lot of stuff. Remember, we've still not got things such as SVOGI lighting really burnt in. It's kind of in Unreal Engine, just for example, but it's not something developers are really using because it's extremely compute intensive. We've got, you know, a lot of different stuff. There's, there's so much things we can do. Even collision detection still kind of sucks in a lot of titles. How many games have you gone f into and you think to yourself, hmm, that's actually nice foliage, or wow, that's actually really nice looking whatever. And then you walk into it and you think, oh, oh, not so much. You just kind of clip through it. Uh, and it continues to sway just as it was when your character moved through it. And these are really tiny, tiny examples but there are also things where the GPU and performance is definitely going to have to increase because it takes a crap ton of calculation, even hair. Like, for example, AMD obviously have their Tress FX, NVIDIA have their fur technology, and all of that's great, but it's still really expensive. Anyway, I think I've laxed, waxed rather, waxed, lyrically long enough. So I'm going to leave you guys to it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.